Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're doing a head-to-head -head comparison of the Ender 3 Pro versus the Ender 3 version 2. So we're not going to be going over uh, print quality and comparing prints from one to the other. This is more of a mechanical, physical overview and the differences uh, between the two printers and kind of how the Ender line has evolved into what it is today. Um, so the Ender 3 Pro, obviously not the original first version of the Ender 3. Um, there's some significant differences uh, between there, primarily around the Y axis really. Um, but we're going to start at the front and we'll compare and contrast the two. We'll start with the Y-axis. On the Ender 3 Pro, we have a 40-40 Y-axis, which is upgraded from the 40-20 that was on the original Ender 3, um, providing better stability for the heated bed, uh, which rolls along that. On the front of that, we have the uh, belt tensioner mechanism, which is kind of two bolts on the side, and then you have to pull it by your hand and then tighten the bolts to, to tension this belt. Um, and it's definitely not as accurate. You know, it's a little finicky to get just that perfect amount of tension in comparison to something like this. Um, so the, again, we're, we're using a 40-40 um, Y rail, uh, so it's very similar in that regard, but we have a built-in belt tensioner, which is screw driven, so I can nicely just make tiny adjustments until that screw is at, or sorry, the belt is at exactly the amount of tension that I want. Uh, a lot easier on my, on my hands, uh, a lot easier to adjust. Um, the same thing can be said about the belt tension on the x-axis. Uh, we have the same screw type tensioner mechanism here, and here we have to unbolt, apply some force with a, a wrench or a screwdriver in there, and then bolt those back on. Um, so minor things, but nice quality of life improvements. Um, obviously, significant difference on the front here. We have a large, um, higher definition screen with a scroll wheel. It's not a touch screen. Um, the wheel scrolls between the menu options. Whereas here we have the standard 12864 or 12864 screen, you know, kind of pixelated, definitely more than good enough to get the job done. And, uh, you know, if you're using something like Octoprint or Repetier Server or something, you're really not looking at these screens much anyway. You're doing it all remote on the web interface. So as we uh, make our way kind of around the sides here, um, we have the power supply. And on the Ender 3 version 2, it, the power supply is built underneath. So it's no longer up here. Um, and on the Ender 3 Pros, they all came with Meanwell power supplies. Um, so we're using quality components. Uh, the same thing can be said about the Ender 3 version 2. These are a Meanwell power supply in here. Um, both of these systems are 24 volt systems. So they share that in common. On the back, um, so we would normally have the power inlet on this little bracket on the power supply on the under three. Um, and on the version two, we actually have the, sorry, power outlet here uh, directly out the back uh, with the toggle switch on there. Y-axis motor assembly here. Um, not that it's a huge deal, but it's exposed. Uh, stuff can kind of get caught in here, uh, including fingers and whatnot. Um, they've covered it with a little shroud. Um, you know, minor improvement, uh, never really was a huge deal for me, but I can see how that will keep all of that a little bit cleaner, and that's welcome. Um, they use the exact same um, strain relief bracket for the uh, heated bed cable coming out the back, um, no changes there. And they're using the same extruder lever mechanism that we've seen forever. Uh, the version two happens to come with a little indicator that clips onto the top here. There we go. Just to show you that, you know, the extruder is extruding and if it's skipping, you'll see it jolt back and forth. So it helps uh, a newcomer diagnose uh, issues around um, their extruder not feeding filament correctly and skipping those steps. Um, we don't have that here, but that's an easy print to add that on for yourself. They're both using exactly the same spool holders. We happen to have them oriented a little bit differently. It doesn't matter, they're identical. Um, and the uh, actual drive gear mechanism for the extruder is exactly the same. Um, and you know, goes all the way back to the CR10. Really. You can also see that since everything is integrated into the base here, it's a little bit cleaner from a wire management perspective. We don't have anything kind of dangling on the table at the back like this. Um, so that's you know minor improvement, but again, every little bit counts. And they're both using a single Z-axis lead screw. We don't have dual Z on either of these. And it would be much more difficult with the orientation of this uh, power supply here. 
They both have the same you know, base structure generally. Um, obviously there's a lot more substance to this one with everything built into the base. You know, the power supply is in there, um, the power outlet here for the power supply, the board, um, and we'll get to another piece later. We have a lot more empty space under here, um, but the frame is still 40-40 uh, with a 40-40 wire or a cross rail between the two, the two legs. On the Z axis, we're still using the standard micro switch, which works perfectly for Z homing. Um, same micro switch under this little shroud cover on both for the uh, X axis uh, limit switch. And back to the front, um, we have the same uh, bed leveling wheels, neither come stock with uh, auto bed leveling, so we need to adjust that ourselves. And they both sit, share a somewhat similar hot end. Um, they have a different, you know, kind of covered design on the new one, it's plastic instead of metal, um, but they're using the same carriage, uh, minor difference to this carriage, but generally the same three wheel X carriage as they've had previously. Um, the hot end heat sink uh, portion underneath here is marginally different. They're both using the uh, MK8 or variants thereof uh, nozzle tips. Um, they're both uh, PTFE lined hot ends. They're not all metal hot ends. Um, so you'll want to keep that in mind when you're attempting to print higher temp materials, you know, in the range of 250 and up to 45 and up, depending. Um, the life of your PTFE tube will be diminished at, at those higher temperatures. As I was mentioning a moment ago, the bases, you know, uh, share some key differences being that this one has a lot more in the base. Um, in the front, we still have a micro SD card. We have micro SD on both. Um, however, the Ender 3 version 2 is using your micro USB cable instead of uh, mini USB. Um, now, micro USB is what phones have been using forever if you're not on USB-C yet. The mini is really older stuff. Um, so I don't know about you, but I didn't have all my old cords, so I had to kind of get a collection of those. Um, we all have micro USB cords laying around likely. Um, and then to fill some of this empty space here, they've included a little tool drawer um, to throw your tools in there. You know, your whole assembly kit will fit in there and store it nicely inside the printer, which makes it nice and portable. Um, you know, you can easily obviously print something similar here, but it's kind of cool that that's included. You know, they've taken cues from what a lot of people were doing in the community and tried to incorporate those where, where they felt it made sense. So one major departure between the two, aside from the obvious screen differences, is the control boards. So let's flip these over and we'll pop the bottoms off and take a look. So on the Editor 3 Pro, we have your typical 8-bit processor. Uh, it's an Atmel uh, 1284P processor. Uh, and if you followed any of our firmware flashing vids, you'd know that we're kind of memory constrained on those things. Um, so usually we have to trim down some of the features that we enable, especially if we're using a BL Touch. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and the stepper drivers that they're using are the um, A4988 stepper drivers. Uh, they're cheap, they work, but you hear them. I mean, you don't hear the drivers, you hear the motors. Um, and that just has to do with the, the signal that they're sending to the motors is a little bit noisy. Um, other than that, we've already kind of discussed the uh, USB and, and micro SD um, kind of standard fare otherwise. But on the Ender 3 version 2, we have a significant departure there. We have a 32-bit chip. It's on the bottom here, this bottom. Yep, we have a 32-bit uh, ARM processor. So that is obviously much faster than the megahertz of the 8-bit chips here. Um, but also we don't have the memory constraints that this one had. We have significantly more memory to play with, and so we'll have no issue turning on basically all of the features that we could want to use. Here we have Trinamic drivers, uh, which are absolutely silent, 256 microstep interpolated, um, but really the main thing that we're concerned about is they're quiet. Um, and I believe they're the um, 2208, uh, TMC 2208 Trinamic drivers. And not a whole lot else of note. Both of these are using Creality custom boards that they design in-house, um, whereas we've seen you know, some SKRs or MKSs used by other manufacturers. Um, and that's, that's about it. So as I said, kind of a high level overview, mechanical, physical differences between the two machines. Hopefully that helps you understand kind of where we were and where we're going to in this line of printers. I hope you found all that useful. Remember to like and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we upload more videos like this. And leave us a comment down below. Let us know what else you'd like to see in the future. 
Thanks for watching.